I'm Janet Fagan, and today we are going to be um, using the portrait as a way to explore self-expression and identity. Uh, so we're going to be using materials that you can make yourself or that you probably have on hand at home um, and will need to be in a place where you can see a reflection of yourself and hopefully have a, a good light source on one side of your face. Um, I'm sitting in front of a big mirror here and you can see that I have a light coming from my right side. You can go into your bathroom if you like, sit in front of the mirror in there. If you have a, a lamp that you can pull in there with you to create a light, maybe turn off all the other lights except for the lamp. <laughs> um, even a hand mirror will work well if you can prop it up on something to keep it steady while you're drawing. That's a, a great tool or a, a makeup mirror, um, maybe on a stack of books or something to keep that handy. Um, the other things that you're, you're gonna need, you're gonna need some paper that you can, that you can work on, a couple of sheets. Uh, I also have um, part of a paper bag here that I'm gonna be using. Uh, you might wanna get that ready. And then you'll see that I also have uh, several piles of different colors that I've cut out from magazines. So make sure these are magazines that nobody's reading or wanting to look at again. Um, but I have, I have separated the colors into reds, oranges, and yellows, or warm colors, uh, blues, greens, and purples, or cool colors, and then some darks, just to make them a little bit easier to find. The other thing that I've done is uh, a way to prep my materials is I've done, some, I've done some writing. So this is just different thoughts that I've had, pieces of poems that I've written, some stream of consciousness thinking, just words that um, are meaningful to me. And I've taken colored pencils, a regular pencil and a magic marker, and just put them in different blocks, trying to use different um, handwriting, different ways to make these blocks of texts feel, feel different. I have a, a, I have a couple of light ones for areas where I may want to have a little more light, and then I have some deeper, darker ones for areas where I may want to show some, some darker areas or some shadows. So if you want to prepare, prepare that, or you can look for text from other sources. Um, this is an, just a page, an index out of an old atlas that is actually out of date because the world has changed since this atlas was created. And so I was able to pick it up at the Goodwill for just a couple of bucks. And um, I've had it for a long time. I use it every now and then. And I just decided to pull a page out um, that represents Seattle. So Seattle is on this index page and that's where I'm from. So uh, there you have it, some materials to get us started. Uh, and then once you're set up in front of your mirror with your light, you're going to start with just some really general observing. Let me get this hand mirror out of the way. So I'm just using a number two pencil here. This will work just fine for you. Um, you're also going to need scissors today and a glue stick. So observing. I'm looking at myself. I'm looking at myself head on. And I'm just going to create a very simple line drawing of myself because what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a line drawing and then I'm actually going to cut it up and I'm going to cut out the shapes that I find to create positive and negative shapes that I can then turn into collage elements and stencils. So I'll show you what I mean about that in a minute. But first, I'm just going to take some time to sketch out a very simple likeness of myself. So I'm starting with a big oval for my head and then a, a cylinder for my neck, a line for my shoulders, a, a line suggesting the scoop of my t-shirt that I have on. And then I'm gonna just give myself a little bit of help keeping things organized in my drawing with a proportion map. So I made a center line uh, top to bottom, a center line again from side to side to just give me a guide where my glasses are gonna fall. 
Um, and then a center line representing the bottom of my nose between the eye line and the chin. And then one more center line for my mouth between the bottom of the nose and the chin. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna start I'm gonna start with my glasses because they're they're giant and I can see them really well <laughs> and they make a big a big shape. So just starting with the bridge, sketching out the big shape of my glasses. This will come into, into play in a little bit. And then I'm gonna look at the just the outline of my nose. I'm not worried about the details, I just want very, very, very simple shapes. So what I see is the, the side of my nose flares out into the sides of my nostrils. And then the bottom of my nose is kind of a wave making room for my nostrils. And then the bottom of the ball of my nose, which comes down. My mouth, I'm gonna look at it closed and not moving so I can get a feel for what the outline of my mouth looks like. Okay, so just really simple. Top and bottom lip. I'm extending my chin just a little bit because I got kind of a little bit off track from my proportion lines there, so I need a little more length for my chin. And now I'm going to look at the big patterns of light on my face. So I see there's a big pattern of light on the side here that goes down behind my glasses. And then I'm noticing that my hair is a shape, kind of goes off the page like so. Kind of triangular away from my head. And then it come, my hair comes in, defining the side of my face. So I'm getting these lines here along the side of my face that are defined by the, the hair. Okay, and I'm gonna go over this drawing a little more carefully now because I'm going to cut it all out in just a second and I want to make sure I know where to cut. Now that I have my, my drawing outlined and emphasized, I'm going to go ahead and, and cut it out and I'm going to just show you an example of what we're aiming for. This is an example that I did at home just to give you an idea of, of where we're going with this. So um, you can see here that this is the, uh, the negative shape of my drawing and this is the positive shape of my drawing. So the positive shape is actually the, the, what I've drawn, the drawing itself, and the negative shape is all the space around it. And these are going to be our tools for building our portrait. So the first step is not to, not to cut it out to this degree. The first thing I wanna do is cut out just the outline or the silhouette, and you'll see why in a sec. So I'm gonna just do that now. So now I've got my silhouette cut out. And I'm just looking at the paper that I brought with me and um, I am going to use this brown paper. And you'll see I did the same thing when I made the demo and this is, this is the cutout. So I'm gonna cut out the shape of my silhouette from the brown paper. So I'm just laying it flat. I'm gonna give it a nice dark outline. use this paper as my working paper and collage this on like so as a starting point, but I think 
I'm more interested in this. So I'm going to pick this up and use this as my background. And that's already starting just with that, oops, just with that addition. I'm starting to tell the viewer a little bit about myself with this portrait. So it's starting to already have a little bit of self-expression in it just with the choice of the background and the color that I'm using for my head and face. And you're gonna have, whoops, can't hang on to the glue stick. And you are gonna have a lot of these fun choices to make as you go. So everything that you add can, show, can share a little bit about who you are, how you see the world, what you think is important, things that you would like people to know about you. Because art is a super effective way to communicate about who we are and what we care about to the world. Sometimes it's easier to make a piece of visual artwork with a message that is meaningful to us rather than to actually speak the words to someone. So it's a, it's a great way to express yourself. Okay, so next step. I've got my silhouette on my background. Now I want to start building in the features that I have in my drawing. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to cut them out just like I did in the demo. And I'm going to show you where we're going with this. So this is, this is the demonstration that I did yesterday. And you can see I had my hair up, but it's the, the idea is using um, text that has meaning, using colors to define yourself. Um, and you want to, as you're, as you're expressing your identity in your portrait, you always want to have in the back of your head that you're making a, you're making a piece of artwork and you want it to be harmonious. So that the choices that you make um, should flow together in a way that your whole composition is united. And we'll talk about that more as, as we go. But you can see here, for example, I used this dark blue to float through the composition and carry the eye from the top to the bottom and side to side. And also choosing the, uh, the text in the background really helps to pull things together too. And also actually gives me more leeway to use more variation in the face if I have something unifying the whole composition. Okay, so I'm gonna cut out all of the individual shapes here so that I have them to work with. So now, um, this is where the fun part happens because you get to start making those creative decisions, how you want to define yourself here. So I am excited to use the text that I created. So I'm just going to think for a second, how do I want to show um, my eyes? So I think I'm going to go with, because I want to draw attention to my eyes, I'd like to emphasize them. So I'm going to go with a color that has, uh, that has a good attractive quality, and that's red. So I'm going to go into my red text, and I'm going to lay my, my eye shape over the top of the red text, and I'm going to 
cut out the red text on my eye shape. So to make that a little bit easier, I'm just gonna go into the text and separate it from the other blocks of text. And the other thing that I'm gonna do to make it a little bit easier is I'm gonna flip it over so that I can trace um, not on the text itself, but on the back. So I also flipped over my, um, my template or my shape at the same time, because you want them both to be facing the same way so you don't get a reverse of that shape. Okay. The next thing that I want to do just to sort of orient myself is I'm going to go for the big shape of the hair. And so looking at my reflection in the mirror, I know that the light is coming from one side, so I'm going to try and emphasize that. So just to make things a little bit more straightforward so that I can start to see where I am, I'm just going to take my pencil and I'm going to outline the edges here. And then once I do that, I can see where I want the color to go. So I'm going to start with some light on the right side and some deeper darks on the left. And I'm just going to have fun building this. So I'm just laying it in right now just so I can get a sense for how I want to cut it. Okay, so now I'm just going to take a few minutes and, and fill in the hair and get that how I want it by shaping the edges a little bit to um, match what I have in my drawing. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just thinking of big general terms right now. Um, we can always tighten things up later, but for now, just keeping it really nice and loose. So you start to get the idea for how you can go back and forth between tracing out your templates to give details of your features and then using your templates just to spatially show you how to fill in different areas. So if I go back and look at the, the finished demo, um, you'll notice that I'm just hitting a few key shapes and I'm even going back in and drawing with the marker to kind of pull things together. So it's really up to you how you determine, you know, what do you want to emphasize? Um, in the piece that I'm working on now, I'm emphasizing the colors in the hair and what I see through my vision, which is a poem that I, I had written yesterday. In this piece, um, I'm emphasizing the, the color in the nose, the highlight here, and then really the, the pattern in the hair of the, of the bricks, echoing sort of the pattern down here in the body of, the, of, of me, of the person. Um, so this is something that you can sit with. You can think about what the right choices are for you, what you want to include. Um, maybe you want to take some time to do some writing away from this for a little while to think about in introducing that element into, the, into your piece in the headband um, here. 
I have a crow that was a, a crow. So that's a poem about a crow. I have a poem that I love uh, that is about one of my favorite birds, the crow, that I included in the headband. And so you can see that it just has a little bit of the text giving just a clue into that. So you don't have to tell the whole story, but the more glimpses that you can give into what's important to you and who you are, um, this will become a more personal portrait that expresses your identity. Um, all right, so thanks for exploring this with me and um, have fun hanging out with your reflection and thinking about these tools and how you're gonna put them together. Thank you.